The last thing that Tomeo need at this stage is to lose a man. They've already lost Andy Moore in the course to injury since the quarter-final match against Down. I think the referee, Morris Deegan, is just telling them to calm down. Now, nothing daft. But he can only do so much. It's up to the players. A yellow card per player. Yeah, Killian O'Connor is lucky that it's not more than a yellow card. Emma McGee deserves a yellow card for going back to the original incident before Killian O'Connor got involved there. I felt he should have been given a free in. Yep, that's the way he felt it as well, but it didn't happen. And what a body blow this is to uh, Mayo. Such a poor start and so reminiscent of what happened when they were here last in 2006. Let's hope it doesn't develop into that kind of a game. Carol Lacey. Huge one down towards Murphy again. He's catching brilliantly into McFadden as a third, maybe. This time it's stopped well by David Clark. And if that had gone in, well, you would really feel for the rest of this match. There's uh, Donegal Flair still down on the field, uh, down on the deck. Colin McFadden and is getting himself back up again. He's OK. Pride wounded, maybe. Leaking and kicking. Durkin comes, takes it. Spills away from him, and the referee... I thought they uh, heard a whistle for a moment there, but the referee says play on. Leo McLoon. Back once again as far as Carol Lacey. Paddy McGrath now. Trying to go by Colum Boyle. And McGrath setting it up once again. This time it's Anthony Thompson played back into space but Boyle takes over once again and now there's a chance for Mayo to counter-attack really strong by the concession of those two goals some eight minutes apart two vital scores for Danny Goal to really settle down the nerves came in here as raging hot favourites in the minds of so many people well it could so easily have been a third for Danny Goal but for a very, very good stop a moment ago there by this man, David Clark, the 28-year-old from Ballina Stevenites. Again, it is Danny Goal. If they can get to this ball. And even then, Mark McHugh went in with the challenge, won it. Comes back to Mayo once more. They need a score to settle themselves down in this match. Michael Conroy. It's very tight. Looking incredibly nervous, made a lot of mistakes. Well, this could so easily uh, have been goal number three here, as this ball came down, was set up there for Colin McFadden, and it was stopped by the right leg of David Carr. While we've been watching that, yes, when we were watching that, actually, our um, Kevin McLaughlin just took his opportunity under a lot of pressure, sliced the ball beautifully between the posts, so at least it gets Mayo on the scoreboard. In the at, 16th minute. Yeah. So 2-1 to a point for Mayo, and Kevin McLaughlin credited with that opening point. The difficulty for Mayo at the moment is around the middle of the field, the two lads, Morn and Aidan O'Shea, are not able to get to the pace of the game. But they've won it back here by a good piece of pressing on the part of Killian O'Connor and then the foul was committed and there's a free kick and uh, Eamon McGee who's already been yellow carded in this match walks away from that somewhat ruefully yes it's interesting watching it O'Shea at the moment coming over to the sideline to James Horn I just wonder what kind of shape he's in I just was feeling maybe he's come in with a slight injury into this match well it was that old injury wasn't it that yep. kept him out for nearly three months earlier on in the season Killian O'Connor hit some wonderful points in the semi-final. He plays with great calmness. A lot of pressure on his shoulders. Puts his boot through that, hits it accurately and puts it over the bar. And now that's exactly what the game has required. Two points in a row for Mayo. First by Kevin McLaughlin and now by Killian O'Connor. Yeah, from a male point of view, that should settle them. It should give them, it, you know, it's given them a toehold in, in the game. But, you know, they're not, as you said, Jared, they're lucky they're not 10 points to two down because that was a wonderful save by Clark a couple of moments ago. Certainly, Martin, every time that ball goes down into that uh, Mayo goal mouth, I think Mayo fans probably have their hearts in their mouths because the backs are having their difficulties. Here it comes again. Murphy once more, still against Kevin Kane. 
and he sets off yet again. This time trying to fist it over the bar, this time stopped by David Clark. And the wind is a factor as well, and of course Danny Gall are very wisely using it during the opening minutes of this first half. Bottom. Struggling to get away, but succeeding eventually is McLaughlin. Back to Donald Bottom. Partly blocked there by Rory Kavanagh, took the heat out of it. Comes back to Neil Gallagher. Swiftly forward here as far as Ryan Bradley. Then on as far as Colin McFadden. McFadden, the 29-year-old from St Michael's. Taking it by Keith Higgins. And the referee eventually saw the foul. Very good tackling by Keith Higgins. He still Colin McFadden up that time. Colin might have given the ball that little bit earlier, but I think he double hopped. Certainly he overcarried it. And uh, credit to Higgins with his tackling. Just watch this here. Yeah. Well, it's all under the okay, but I think it's, it's it steps really. It steps more than anything else that he's called that he's blown for. This is uh, taken in here by Neil McGee. Jersey pulled by Ender Varley. Still gets away. And there's a gap here which Ryan Bradley can exploit. He can make up a lot of ground here. Wants to try and take it around Aidan O'Shea. Clearly is struggling with his fitness. Back once again it comes. The bustling left half forward punches the air as he puts that one over the bar. Ryan Bradley's first point. He'll be absolutely delighted with that. He was man of the match in two of the Ulster Championship games or he was taken off before half-time in the semi-final. So that will do his confidence a whole lot of good and he makes it 2-2 to two points. Yeah, he'll be delighted with that because he's been taken off actually in every game so far in the, in the Championship, but last day it was because of a poor performance of it. That was some response, lovely score. Kevin McLaughlin. This time it's Alan Dillon. Towards McLaughlin. Firing it in here. Up to, into the netting, the side netting. All gone wide. And that's uh, Mayo's second wide of this match. Both teams with two wides. Yeah, that was a waste of a ball. In fairness, Killian O'Connor was the only one up. Maybe he was trying to direct it into Killian, but he sliced it off the side of his foot and it went wide on his own side. But just, let's just see this kick out. Watch Dorkin's kick out. Will it go down the middle towards Neil Gallagher, who's broken most of the ball so far, or will they try it short of the wing? James Corrin there encouraging his players to settle down, get into the match a bit more, feel confident about the challenge. Bounces around there once again, this time as far as Ryan Bradley. Slipped into the half-forwards here. Back to Colin McFadden it comes, kicking from 45 metres with unerring accuracy. How about that? What a score. A goal and two points now. The goal coming after 11 minutes. His first point was a free, and that one brilliantly put over from play. Hugely effective this season. Colin McFadden. And now 2-3 to two points. That's wonderful efficiency, but if you go back to the source of it, there was a mix-up again under the broken ball by two of the Mayo players. Poor communication, lost the break, McFadden finished it off. Are you anyway surprised that Mayo haven't got an extra player in defence playing against the breeze with the power and strength of this Johnny Gold defence so evident in the opening minutes of this match? Well, they've been trying to play Keith Higgins over in front of the full-back line, but the quality of the Johnny Gold delivery has been such that they're cutting it out, and Murphy's positioning in front of the goals. Now Cafferty has gone back on him, but Murphy's positioning has been very, very effective, and his finishing, his, the finish that we saw at the beginning was really emphatic. Once again, it's Kevin McLaughlin. This time, uh, Lee Keegan trying to get it back towards McLaughlin, can't hold on to it. It's stunning goal, ruthlessly efficient. Doing the simple things really well. Once again, Ryan Bradley trying to break out of defence. And even when the challenge doesn't quite produce a result for Mayo. In comes a support player, Rory Kavanagh this time. Thompson then with the ball thrown. Referee says uh, that he didn't like the way in which it was dispatched. Yeah, he was throwing him for over carrying, which I think is a bit harsh. I think Rory Kavanagh will feel hard done by at that time. I felt myself. But, you know, what was noticeable just before that uh, uh, moment, how sharper and faster Donegal are into the breaking ball. They're so much crisper and faster. I think that was thrown all right. Thrown, yeah. And the referee having a word or two there still with Rory Cavanaugh. Down on the ground at the moment is Eamon McGee. It's Eamon's 100th competitive match for Donegal this afternoon. 
and uh, he'll want to, at the end of this to be able to celebrate it with an All-Ireland medal the ultimate for the Guido player very skillful player very adept player as well and uh, able to go back and cover in the full back line should that be required alongside his brother Neil that was a wonderful tackle actually from Mickey Conroy that put the ball loose but when that ball went loose Mayo were very very slow to come in, in, the, in on the breaking ball Donegal so far have looked more dynamic more fluent when they have got the ball and their you know their methodology or their system is working much much uh, crisper than Mayo's Mayo really haven't come out of the blocks yet I think the four Mayo fans in that crowd there when they saw two goals going in inside 11 minutes they said not again not the third time in seven years this is happening to us they went here with a lot of faith and hope today, especially because it wasn't Kerry this year they were facing in the final. Well, Killian O'Connor now scored one point from a free already. This from 45 metres by the time he gets to hit it. And will it curl in? Not quite. It was a tricky breeze down there today, and it's very, very awkward for the free takers. Yeah, but nonetheless, in a game of this importance and considering that you're, whatever it is, seven points down, scores like that are needed to actually just eat into the lead and build up your confidence. Well, James Horan will be aware that uh, Danny Gaul are a very, very good second-half team. And having been given a lead like this, having won over a lead like this in the opening 23 minutes or thereabouts, they're going to be very hard to pin back. That's broken down this time by Barry Moran. This time the referee saw some holding and it's a free kick which is very quickly taken as far as Kevin McLaughlin. Swiftly in here, just about taken by Paul Dirk and with some difficulty. Back out as far as Paddy McGrath and there's a lot of space now in front of the ball carrier who's Rory Cavanagh. McGrath's kept going forward. Cavanagh once again. Inevitably it's Mark McHugh, the Sligo IT student. Lacey. Quickly down as far as Ryan Bradley and now Paddy McCreary. Back once again it comes to McHugh. One against three or four. He was looking for McFadden, but it's the Mayo cover that winning is winning at this time. Colin Boyle. Up as far as Michael Conroy. Chance to turn now. Mayo needing a score from him. Up into the sky it comes comes back down into the waiting arms here of Anthony Thompson about to be challenged by Jason Doherty swiftly out towards Rory Cavanagh and once again the would-be press of Mayo comes to nothing because there's great composure and great strength and great togetherness normally about Donegal except for that wayward pass back it comes to Donald Bohan Jason Doherty now this time Killian O'Connor taking over hitting it Hitting it to the right, kept in place somehow 